Good morning, church. Father, I thank you as we start our day today. Um, everyone that comes up here to speak, Lord, just anoint us and bless us. And uh, especially our pastor, just fill him. Fill him with the Holy Spirit and let him just have a golden tongue today. And, and let us just eat up his words uh, like it's a Kentucky Fried Chicken, Lord. And, and uh, just blesses us and go all through our bodies and we just can't wait to leave here and run and tell somebody lord and especially our family members and especially those that that aren't saved and let everybody just look at us and say hey i want that why is he so happy where that light come from because they're out there in darkness and doing what they do doing what i used to do and i just thank you that uh, i'm no longer that person but uh i'm just new in you lord and Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. So, um, people used to ask me, Hodges, where in the Bible uh, does God talk about us working? I mean, oh, thanks. Uh, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do we have to work? Can I just be idle and sit around and, and wait till somebody else work and catch them coming out to check cash in place? And, you know, uh, the guy that's working, he's working for me. You know, they call them a suckers of squares, you know. And uh, But we're going to find out what the Lord has to say about that. So as usual... Uh, if you guys got a pen, I'm going to give you three scriptures. The first one is going to be Genesis 2.15. This is the first place in the Bible where I've seen the Lord does require you to work. Uh, the second one is 1 Thessalonians uh, 11 and 4, 11 and 12. And then the third one is 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. All right. So, here's uh, the first one I told you about, Genesis 2.15. And it says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and to keep him, to keep it, rather. Sorry about that. Uh, a lot of different translations will say, uh, I'm reading out of the uh, New King James. It'll say, put him in there to work, you know, to tend and keep it, to work it, not to sit around in luxury because the Garden of Eden was luxury, a uh, beautiful place. And he could have sat around and sipped iced tea or play video games, but no, <laughs> God didn't want that. He put him in there to, to work, you know, to keep it up. All right. Now, I think the second place I told you was First uh, Thessalonians four and uh, eleven and twelve. And okay, here it is. Verse eleven says that you also aspire to lead a quiet life to mind your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk properly towards those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. So when I come out of my house or I ride the trolley a lot or when I come out of 7-Eleven, if that person came up to me and said, brother, do you have a, a sandwich or do you have something to eat or can you help me out with a couple of bucks? Now, if the Lord didn't bless Janet and I to, to have something or to work, you know, it doesn't have to be the best job in the world. Uh, uh, we own our own business like uh, Brother Bernard and Pastor Darrell. <laughs> you knew I was going to tell your name there. Uh, 
you got to have something to give something, you know. And um, I wouldn't be able to, uh, like I said, he blesses me so I can bless other people. You know, not to keep it to myself and say, well, Pastor, this is my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Where's yours at? <laughs> you know? And uh, don't get mad at me when I read this next one. <laughs> Second Thessalonians 3 and 10. And the word of God says, For even when we were with you, we commanded you that, commanded you this, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. Wow. And uh, that's, that's God's, that's the word of God. Don't get mad at me. So, uh, and it doesn't mean that if a guy's disabled or if he's too old to work or if he's uh, too sick or too young, you know, it's uh, those strong, healthy bodies, male or female. You know, um, we've done things in the past, some of us, and uh, I'm not going to mention no names. I wouldn't anyway, <laughs> you know, because uh, I've done worse than a lot of other people, so I can't talk about nobody. But um, uh, there's things that uh, that I used to do that I thought uh, I didn't need to work. You know, I have three sons, and uh, one of them I said, uh, and I'm going to say his name, I said, so Philip, uh, what are you doing now? Well, Dad, I'm a, I'm a professional gambler. And uh, I thought about that, and I said, can't you get a job? <laughs> you know, that's that's not a job. Maybe it is a job, but to me, I'm old school. That's not a job. You, that's, that's fun, you know. And uh, you're not going to always win. So I, I just want to encourage him to uh, get out there and, uh, and do something. You know, I try to lead by example. Uh, because they pretty much are following their friends and they see the dope dealers and the hustlers with the bling bling and the driving the new cars and stuff. And they think that's cool and, and it's not. So anyway, uh, the message this morning is, uh, not Pastor Darrell's message, but mine is this edification. So get out there and work and, uh, uh, I don't know who this is for, but <laughs> get out there and work and uh, and stay healthy, you know, and take good care of yourself. And uh, if I can do it, anybody can do it. I'm 70 years old, and the Lord has not told me to retire, you know, not even close. So I'm going to work until they pry my old dusty fingers off the doorknob to get to the time machine, the clocking machine, not time machine, like I'm going to this. <laughs> anyway, um. And uh, as usual, it's time for me to get down before I get that look. <laughs> okay, so you guys be blessed. And, uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs>